Hi, this is France. Welcome to this new journal on Monday. Today I'm starting with some Tim Holtz tissue paper, which uh, I'll be gluing down with golden gel medium, which is uh, very handy when you have to glue down such a big surface. Laying my paper straight, then flattening it down with a bone folder to make sure I don't have any air bubbles underneath. I'm securing all the little edges because I want to make sure my paper will stay in place when I will be playing with watercolor afterwards. As it will be very wet, I want to make sure everything will stay in place. Now I like to tear up the paper, but as you can see, the tissue paper is quite resistant, so I have to go in with my scissors. Also because the glue is still wet, it makes it even harder to tear it all apart. Now if you don't like my bladderings, you can always turn down the volume. <laughs> and put on some music of your, of your own if you want to. I asked a question on uh, Facebook and people wanted to hear me again, so here I am. This is clear gesso because uh, I want to play with the watercolors and the tissue paper is quite resistant at picking up color, especially watercolor. Clear gesso will stay um, translucent, so I can still see the paper, under, the paper underneath, but it's also quite absorbent, so it will allow me to play with uh, the watercolor afterwards. Drying it just a bit. And now the fun parts can begin. First I'm spraying some water, because I want to make sure the inks will um, go around and not stay just there where I put them. Putting on some colors and then blending everything and spreading it around. Adding some more water to make it move. These are so warm colors. Um, those watercolors are Colorex by Pibeo. They're really, really rich in color. And drying even more. I think my heat gun is probably the tool I use the most in my studio. As it's a watercolor, I can play around with water and add some stains, which makes it look a bit more grungy, a bit less smooth. Perfect Pearl Mist is a product by Ranger. It's actually Perfect Pearl, which is normally a powder, but it's in a liquid form. So you can spray it around and it has a real, real shine to it. This is a color version. The previous one was a metallic version. Now the camera doesn't pick it really up, but it's pretty shining. And adding some more. This is also a metallic version. I want to um, accentuate the shapes a bit. So I'm going in with a charcoal pencil, just going around everything. The fact that I have been working on clear gesso makes it easier to work with my charcoal pencil. And blending it around, just to soften everything and to bring it all together a bit. I know a couple of you are having their morning coffee, so good morning. I hope your coffee is good. <laughs> I 
I put some um, black acrylic paint in my jar. I added, some, I added some water so that I could play around with it easy, easily with my finger. At this stage it looks a bit bold, but it's just going to be a background. There will be something on top of it, so it will be less um, there in your face like it's right now. And adding even more charcoal pencil because I, wanted, uh, I want to keep it visible even when I will have the rest on top of my page. I don't always know what I want to do, but today I know. I know I want to stamp with this uh, foam stamp, which is a um, Donna Downey stamp by Prima. And I want to stamp it with gesso because I really want it to be on top of all the rest. So I'm putting my gesso with a, a foam brush on the foam stamp. I'm working quite quick because I don't want uh, the gesso to dry on my stamp. And again, now as soon as I am done stamping, um, this stamp will go in the sink under the water because, well, there it is, hop, clean. <laughs> now I'm going to do the same with another Donna Downey stamp, exactly the same technique. A bit more gesso, working fast again. And this one has to be cleaned straight away. Hop, clean. Took me a couple of minutes to get it that clean. I can tell you that. I don't have to dry this for too long because it's a very thin layer, but I wanted to have the shape so that I can go in like I'm doing now with some oil pastel. I'm going in with the white first to accentuate the stamp I made. Now I still want those hearts to be visible, so before I go back to um, the front design, I'm going back to the background and add a bit more uh, details to those hearts. A bit more shading, also with the oil pastel. I really like those sennelier because they're really creamy and you can really smear them with your finger. Then I'm going back um, with color, which you can't see <laughs> because it's a, it's a very soft color, but I will be adding more and more and in the end you will see it. Actually this too will become a background for the next layer. So like I said, usually I don't know where I'm going, I, I just follow that first idea that pops into my head. But for this one, I knew for these two layers that that was what I wanted to do. Adding some green accents. To the stems. Adding a bit of a darker color at the base of the flower. You can go in as much as you want, as often as you want with those uh, sennelier. Uh, adding a bit of a border with archival ink. I couldn't do this with uh, distress ink because of the gesso, but also because of um, the oil pastel. Distress ink wouldn't, wouldn't have any grip on it. This is just a dye made in watercolor paper, which I will be colorizing with pen pastel. These are so much fun to play with. 
Okay, I don't like um, the softness of it, so I'm adding a bit of embossing ink, and you can see that it's picking up a lot more color now, even if the paper isn't that good for pen pastels. Adding even more embossing ink, this time with a sponge, and going back in to add even more pen pastel. I'm playing with different kinds of blue here, bit of a darker shade around the borders. Now I should uh, put some fixative on it, but I don't want to add fixative. First I'm drying my embossing ink, and now as fixative I'm going to use clear gesso, as it's completely translucent, translucent once it's uh, dry. I can use it as a fixative. And on top of that, I'm adding a layer of distressed crackle paint so that I can play with even more pen pastel afterwards to accentuate the crackles. Um, this video is about 16 minutes long. It took me um, an hour and a half to make the page in real life. This is probably the part where one of my friends is laughing very hard because she says I'm always cleaning my surface, right? I can hear you laugh. <laughs> I'm accentuating the crackles, again with a darker color on the borders and a lighter color in the middle. I have one sponge uh, per color for my pen pastels. This way I can keep them longer and I don't have to clean that much, which is always a bonus. Taking the excess off and now adding even more distress ink to make it look a bit less clean. Yes, I'm cleaning again. <laughs> Those uh, trays for the pen pastels are really, really handy. A little bread at the top of the birdcage. I always like a little metallic touch. Taking a piece of rope, which will be um, the hanging for the birdcage. Fixing it with a tiny attacher. Checking out the length. And then taping it down so that it stays in place. And there it is. This is a little bird I made for another project and then didn't use. I have a whole jar of these little embellishments I once made for one or another project and then ended up not using, so I keep them because they always come in handy. Um, someone once asked me about my wordings. I like to print down words that I see on um, Pinterest or somewhere else on the internet and that I like so that I have a lot of uh, wordings ready when I when I'm journaling so I only have to cut them down and play with them adding a bit of distress ink on the edges of my wording which I could also be doing with my pen pastels and now I can glue everything together gluing my little bird which was also colorized with pen pastel and finished with bindex which is a translucent um, acrylic product which adds a, a very nice shine to it date stamp and even more archival ink 
on the borders because they're looking too soft for me. I like it a bit more grungy. After that I added some white accents around the wordings, but my camera didn't want to record that part, so that's it for today. I hope you liked it and hope to see you back next week probably, or on my blog. See you there, bye!